Hey guys, I'm Richard Beck with Beck Tools, and today I'm going to be running the Langmire Systems MR1, and I'm going to be answering a couple questions that I get a lot. So the first question I get a lot is, can I run production parts, and will this machine pay for itself? <clears throat> well, one of those questions I can definitely answer. Yes, you can run production parts. This is a production part that I'm running right now. Those are some over there that are in process. Um, but this guy right here, I'm actually going to run uncut um, and show you the entire machine run for this. Um, super smooth, um, highly accurate, and you can see that I have refined my program 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times. So, and now a lot of guys, this leads into that other question is, will the machine pay for itself? It depends on you, right? Have all the other tools in your shop paid for themselves? If they haven't, this one won't either. Um, the answer to that question is, if your machines pay for themselves, it's because you make them pay for themselves, okay? A machine is just a tool. And if you're a bad craftsman, it's not gonna do anything special. Um, so, <laughs> I hate to be so blunt, eh, but that's the truth. It's not gonna pay for itself if you can't make it pay for itself. <clears throat> now, if you look at all these parts, at fifty dollars a piece, and uh, this is a nine-minute part. I don't know how quick do you think you could pay off your machine, and you could probably make parts that are even more expensive than these parts. So, first of all, this this part right here, when I did the prototype, it was a twenty-two-minute program. The last time I ran it, it was eight minutes and fifty-six seconds, and most of the time saved was in eliminating Z moves. The Z axis maxes out at 40 inches a minute on the Langmire Systems MR1. And on top of that, most programs, if you don't really tweak and dial the settings in, have lots of extra Z moves. Z moves are a massive time suck. If you're programming, you've got to get rid of as many Z moves as possible. So, just by eliminating a whole bunch of Z-axis moves, I took this part from 20, 22 minutes, I think, to under nine minutes. So I'm gonna run this program for you, and you guys are gonna see how I, how I uh, set this part up, and we're gonna watch it run. So let's transition to that. Um, I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm not cutting anything, because when I cut, everybody cries foul. Um, so we're gonna you're gonna see the whole entire uncut process here um, And there's I'm gonna put some chapters in the video so you can jump around you can skip this intro if you want and go straight to cutting chips um, But we're gonna be here at least another nine minutes after I get this part clamped in so I take this is a solder machine works fixture um, I'm not an affiliate for solder machine works. I do sell these though on the website, vectools.com. This is the EMT Quick Stop. Um, and I'm just using it today because I need to machine both sides. So this has to be centered. Um, so I sit this in here. And uh, the problem is because I'm machining this, my uh, stop can't be there. So I just slide it forward. These stops have a, a collar. So you can slide it right up against. And then I move my part up against my needle. I then pull that away. I go find my wrench <laughs> and I clamp it in place. All right, so the parts clamped in place. My stop is pushed out of the way. Let's go ahead and hit the go button. Um, I'm going to close the doors because I'm running full flood coolant and I don't want a massive, massive mess out here, but don't worry, I cleaned the glass, so it should be fairly decent despite having the door closed. In a second, I will let you know what the feeds and speeds are, my depths of cut, 
all that information. Let me just get the camera set here. All right, so I'm running 8,000 inches a minute. That is a four millimeter, three flute end mill. I'm doing 20,000 step over and we're moving at 100 inches a minute. Um, interesting thing, my cam software says this should be a six minute and 12 second video, but because of the acceleration limits on the MR1, it's actually an eight minute and 59 second part run. And that's true with every machine. Your cam software is gonna tell you one number and the real number is probably not quite that good. Unless, of course, your machine has crazy acceleration. Um, which, I mean, this, is, this machine's no slouch. Um, it's still getting after it. Let me raise this up just to get above the water droplets a little bit. There we go. Blood coolant nozzle is a little bit in the way but it is what it is when you want to go really hard and fast flood coolant is probably gonna be the way to go when I was running this at the very beginning I just had the mist coolant on but at this point I am a 4.2 foul chip load um, I had a two flute and I was over five thousandths chip load but I don't have enough inches per minute with the three flute to go any faster. The machine has enough power, it's just limited to 100 inches a minute. So this same tool on a different machine could definitely go more than 100 inches a minute. I think my calculations were 126 inches a minute. Um, what I could run this tool at, but with the MR1, 100 inches a minute is your max which is not terrible I'm still going to be able to run this part in under 9 minutes and this part is a $50 part so yeah you have a minute or two changing parts so you're talking like 11 minutes per part at 50 bucks a piece so back to the can the machine pay for itself absolutely it can will it that's completely up to you so that's why it's hard for me to answer that question because I get it so often. Well, will this machine pay for itself? I don't know. Will it? <laughs> that's so subjective. It all depends on who's running it and whether or not you can sell parts. It can make parts. That is not the question. Can you sell parts? People think parts sell themselves. They don't. You've got to knock on doors. You've got to pick up the phone. You've got to call. You've got to get customers. You have to retain customers and you have to beat out your competitors. This is one, this tool path right here, this is an adaptive tool path. And this tool path actually, every single time it stopped, it would lift 10 thousandths, turn around, drop 10 thousandths, and then do the move. So eliminating that reduced the program by half a minute. And I'm at 20,000 step over. Could I take more? Maybe, but this is only a four flute, end, or this is only a four millimeter end mill. One downside to no cuts, raw, unedited, is you get all of my misspeaks. So I'll try to correct them in real time, since I can't come back and edit. But uh, this part's already been going for five minutes. It's almost finished. It's crazy that if you're willing to put the time in and continue to tweak and tweak and tweak the program, you can go from 22 minutes down to eight minutes, 50 some seconds. Like, so it's all about how much do you want to invest time-wise into perfecting every program. If I had one part, I would never mess with it. But I have to run 
I don't know, I'm probably gonna do 50 or 60 of these. So it's worth it. Because I'm just standing here watching the machine run. I might as well go back to my laptop, make a tweak while it's running, and have that ready to go for the next part. And that's what I did. Um, every single time I'd be standing here and I'd be like, hey, that's a wasted move. Let's get rid of it. And I'd go over to the laptop and I'd fix it. But like I said, it's all about the Z moves. That's the best bit of advice I could give you guys who already have MR1s or are looking to optimize your programs. You gotta get rid of as many Z moves as possible. Like when you bore a hole, there's a button that says keep the tool down. Um, if you don't do that, it bores the hole right here. When it gets to the bottom, it would fully retract, go back down, do a finishing pass, fully retract, go back down and do a spring pass. But now, you'll notice it stays down. It never pulls out of the hole. It does all three of those paths without pulling out of the hole. Right there, oh, that was three of them. Imagine if it had to move all the way up and all the way down in between each one of those. This is just a finishing pass. So you rough hard, but then you go back and kiss the baby as Titan CNC says. Um, so that's just a finishing pass. And that's only taking, that's, that's a spring pass. I'm not taking any additional material. So when I was roughing, the tool will deflect and your dimensions won't be accurate. But if you come back in here and chase it with a spring pass, it will, first of all, it's gonna look way better. Second of all, your dimensions are gonna be dead on, dead on. So I always cut the parts with a little extra. That way if I load it a little bit either way, I'm good. And then I machine both sides. It's also the reason this part is four inches overall because those vice jaws are three and three quarters. So if I make sure I design this part just bigger than the jaws, I can machine both ends as well as the top. And I also designed this part to have no machining on the back side. So I can do everything in one program. Also, don't do tool changes. Tool changes suck a ton of time. Now when I finish these, I am gonna have to put a thread mill and thread them all, but I'll do all of them at once, right? I'll do all 50 parts with this tool, all 50 parts with the next tool. Um, I mean, you're talking three minutes I know Langmeyer has that video showing you swapping a tool in one minute. Guys, that's not realistic. That's like a special circumstance if all the stars align. At the end of the day, it's gonna take you more than a minute to swap a tool, reset it, and it's just too much variation, uh, you know? Why enter variables into the process? All right, it's done. Let's pull it out and take a look. All right, this is a little bit more of challenging with the camera in the way. I'll try not to block it completely. Like I said, guys, if you're interested in this stop, check out backtools.com. My shameless plug there. Also, if you want to buy this, this is a brand new product. It's not even public yet. I've got to run 60 of this, 60 of the mating part, and then I've got to buy a whole bunch of magnets. Magnets. Um, and a lot of you guys might realize what this is. I'm going I'm to just go ahead and tell you what it is. If you're a, a follower of the channel, you deserve to know before everybody else. This is a magnetic mount for a... CNC plasma cutter. And not only is this a breakaway mount, it's adjustable this way and it's adjustable this way. So you can totally tram and dial your torch in without using those stupid cam bolts that are a pain to adjust. This on the mating part that attaches to the uh, machine has set screws that allow you to tip it this way and then it has a pivot and a slot that allow you to pivot that way. So not only is it gonna be fully adjustable, it's gonna be magnetic breakaway so you can change your consumables. Also, if you crash your machine, it'll just fall off and won't damage anything. So that's the new product. I'm gonna get this anodized and uh, it should be on the website. It takes about a week to get them anodized. We're talking like two weeks. Two weeks from now, we'll be selling magnetic 
CNC plasma torch mounts. And this is backwards compatible. This will run the standard Langmire Systems torch. So you don't even have to have one of my torch kits. You can have the standard one that came with the machine and you can still run this magnetic breakaway. So anyway, that's the big reveal, guys. Um, I'm not going to put that in the title. If you stuck around this long in the video, you'll know. Other people won't. Thanks for watching, guys. If you appreciate this type of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And wow, it was super zoomed in. I don't even know if you could see the part that whole time I was jibber-jabbering. Um, there's the part. I'm going to put these in the tumbler, and they're going to look really good. And then we're going to blue anodize them. Anyway, like I said, like, subscribe, share this with your buddies who might be interested in an MR1. Um, yes, this machine is not perfect, guys. I've never, I've, I've always been honest about that. I will tell you its weaknesses, and I will tell you its strength. Um, but overall, this machine is kicking ass, and it is making me money. It is the clutch component of Beck Tools. Without this machine, my company would not exist the way it does right now. So... It's making money, and it has paid itself off plenty of times to answer that question from the beginning of the video. See you later.